I mean, I saw that there were a lot of parts in the box opening, but I thought, yeah, can't be that tricky. I mean, a lot of parts, just a lot of glue. How much more difficult can it be than that? Why don't you find out right here on Gary Stuff? Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before, today is build day of the kit of the week. That kit is the World War II US Infantry Patrol set in 135th scale from ICM. Now, today I'm essentially building the truck, the G7107 truck that comes in the kit. Later in the week, there will be a video about the painting of the figures. And of course, there's already a video available of the box opening to see what you get inside for your money. How will you know when the future stuff comes up? Easy, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all my future video as they are released. And of course, anything you like on my channel, please do give it the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. If you'd like to support the channel in a more concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. I would like to point out once more that this kit was given to me for free as a review sample by the people at ICM. However, they haven't made any conditions about what I should say or sent the script or anything like that. They, like you, just want an honest review of the kit and that's what they, like you, are going to get. So let's make a start building the G7107 truck from the US Infantry Patrol set in 135th scale from ICM. Okay, we'll start by putting this piston onto this chassis rail, like so. Cool. And then this leaf spring, this leaf spring here, goes on like so. There and there. I will just tack that in place. Then the other leaf spring goes against these tabs at the back. It's a, a slightly tricky fitting like that. And it looks like some sort of sub guard or something, I don't know where, it is, where it's going to go yet. Anyway, there's two mounting brackets that go on it, one on each side. They are very, very fiddly, but they will go on. I have faith that they will go on. There we go. Better glue it before I break it. Wish I could tell you what these parts are, but I got some sort of spring. Sort of coil assembly there. Um, but I don't know what it is, but I'm just going along and building them. So I could just get along and build things and then sort of mention something when it looks difficult, couldn't I really? Hmm. Okay, so now we'll go from front to back, putting in all these various bits and pieces which are sort of cross members and, and whatever. Um, just make sure you get them the right way up. Uh, look at the diagram twice and then look at it again just before you put anything in place. Make sure individual components are the right way because some of them it's not immediately clear whether you're right or wrong, as in this case. That's okay. Uh, next is that sump type thing we put in and made earlier. It goes in there. Uh, 
Then there is a, make sure we get this the right way around. I think that can only go that way around, he said. With all the confidence of the novice. That can only go that way around. And then finally, and it goes on there. Okay. There we go. All the various bits there. So now what we do is we do the other chassis rail and then join the two together. Then the two halves of the chassis can go together and start we start here in the middle. Okay, that, that sits there. Come up at the front end is this cross member here. Make sure that's in place properly, which it is. And go down to the other end. So that's in place and then get these in place as well that's pretty much it okay just double check all of these connections all of these positions make sure it's all squared nicely and then leave it to set the fuel tank sits across the two chassis members just like so So it should sit like this. And we made this transfer box here and that goes in just around here, like so. I'm gonna let all of this set up now and I'm going to then paint it. because the next thing I need to build according to the instructions is the engine. And not all of the engine is the same color as this. And I don't want to be spraying and trying to catch up bits of color here and there. So I'm going to do this, do the engine, put this, and from then on I'll be, um, with assemblies, I'll be pre-painting the assemblies before they go on. Does that sound right? I think so. Okay, so I'm just putting the engine together. It really is, simply just one bit after another it's quite fine the only thing i would do out of turn is as soon as i've got the uh dynamo alternator probably dynamo i imagine on um i've got this pipe on as well as soon as i can because to get this to sit in the right place you can put the fan assembly fan belt assembly on that will then just get this in the right place so but if you put it on earlier and then let it sit there you might find it's not actually sitting exactly where you want but that sort of puts it in the right place and then just do all the rest of the ancillaries it goes together very very straightforwardly i have to say let's have a little shot glass here for mixing the paints here is the um, icm us dark green i'll be using 1072 so have a look inside there for you there we go it off in fact i'll just get rid of that little color in the recycling there you go okay there is um as you said it's not a dropper bottle it's a, a regular little bottle but that's fine so um i will put some of this into the giving it a good old shake put some of this into the pot Twelve drops, <clears throat> and put the top back on straight away. I've got some airbrush thin. I use a sprue box one for general purpose thinning of acrylic paints like this.
yep, 50 50 and I always add two or three drops of flow improver this will sort of delay the drying of the acrylic um, just mix that together and see what kind of consistency we have I'm pretty happy with that might actually go just a tiny bit more thinners just a little drop drop or two more okay yeah it's more like it excellent so just load that up into the paint it's the airbrush now and we're ready to go i'm just going to run this through my um, gallery gh8068 the trigger one uh, it's about 20 psi let's see what happens what i like about this is you can you can just use the air supply here just to dry it off because it dries so quickly and it is really matte i mean a properly matte finish and you can see any damp pieces straight away you can watch it dry right in front of you and then start reapplying the color straight away one two three now i'm going to do the engine i'll see if i can get the um the to show you how it dries okay how is it how is paint dry so spray some on first of all and if you can see it's wet and then just hold the brush no paint coming out now but just hold the brush with the air going and you can actually watch it drying in front of your eyes so you know it's, it's safe to put another coat on top absolutely lovely so you can show that again somehow and there we go so you, see, you can actually watch it going matte and drying right in front of you just by blowing air onto it which i think is a, a brilliant thing to be able to do that's the benefit of this being properly matte we can put uh, it's a bit more paint on if we need uh, should be about right and just dry it off Can we make a start on the uh, front differential and axle? The rear axle is pretty much the same, except there are these two sort of things. I don't know what these are. I'm sorry, I don't know what they are. I uh, don't think they're anti track, uh, tramp, or anything. Anyway, whatever. This is two, and these are really, really, really difficult to get off the sprue. So be really careful. And, you know, cut them off with a hot knife or something because they're really. No, actually, don't do that because you'll melt the part. Just try and cut them off really, really gently. Yeah, so I've I've painted up the engine a bit, uh, bits of you know bare steel and stuff like that, and other bits that have been painted. Uh, painted some stuff black as well. Um, if I was really clever, I would put the ignition leads on here between the distributor and the sparks, but I'm not, so I'm going to, because I'm not that good at this thing. So, this now engine, I, I, it'll be dirtied up a bit later on as well, which would be cool, which actually, actually will look pretty cool. Now, the engine is going to go in to the chassis. The drive shaft goes... I got to double check just to make sure it's abs I'm absolutely convinced I'm in the right one. Okay, into the top. You can see here the top one. I think is the top one here is for the engine, and the bottom one is the drive that goes off to the front axle. So let's put that in. If we can. And then it kind of sits on the mounting points like so. 
Okay, so it sits in like this, and then we'll just glue it in place. So I'll leave the engine in there for a while to um, secure its place. Then we'll flip it upside down here and put the axles on and the transmission, uh, the, the, the drive shafts to the uh, to differentials. That will be the next trick. So the axles and go on, try and get the drive shaft in first, prop shaft in rather, first. And there we go. And so, all very nice. And just go around and touch up the little bits of paint here and there. Then there's this um, linkage to go in, I think it goes that way around. Yeah, it goes that way around because it goes over. Things on this end. So I just need to go and get my tweezers. Yeah, so I think this is probably a steering steering link, maybe. Anyway, I don't know if it's a steering link or an anti roll bar or something like that, but um, anyway, I think it's a steering link. And that goes in to the into these wheels. It's more little connection bits here. Some first, and then that connects onto the little thing we put on the rear oh my goodness the uh rear axle a while a while back and there's one on the other side as well the running boards are held onto the chassis by these brackets that glue into place then the brackets attach to the chassis right here the inlet manifold goes on the left side of the engine like so the cover of the body goes together like so the air filter on the top in halves and when it's dry the cover of the body can sit on top of the air intake so right, so now we've got to put the exhaust in and it's a little tricky goes in under here underneath the inlet manifolds that's supposed to go either side of them up here it only Vaguely kind of does. Actually, that would that would work like that. Okay, let's get some cement in here. Then the back half of the uh, exhaust box can go on. That's the sorry, it's not very uh, not very audible. Hold on. I'll try my best to do something without breaking everything else. There we go, that goes in there. That attaches to that. Then that chips on there. like so okay that's good just touch up the paint and a bit of um, maybe do a little bit of dusting and shading as well 
just going to start assembling the cab now but before I put the rest in I've, there's a combing piece that fits in here on the inside of the top of the uh, window frame here there's the rearview mirror of course there's a decal for the instrument cluster and just added a few spots of black around here and there for various instruments then the floor of the cab slots into place here and we can do it all together like that like so these two uh, levers go in here i don't know what they are i i'm gonna guess there's something maybe differential locks or something like that for the uh, transfer boxes for the four wheel drive for some reason the bigger one goes behind um behind the smaller one you go figure I, I don't know why either then the handbrake lever can go in as well there's a whole whole generation here of american drivers who know how to use a stick shift i mean in the uk you'd source it pretty much that, that's what you learn with whether you like it or not i mean you can get an automatic only license but most people learn with a gear stick and then even if they then get an automatic for the rest of their lives um at least in that season I, yeah i use an automatic i hate driving around town in in a, a manual car because it's, it's a pain in the leg really <laughs> constantly operating clutch backs and forwards all the time is a pain in the whatever but um you know a whole load of people in in usa just never ever use stick shift and they wouldn't even think about it um but you know drivers in the military that's what they got stick shift whether they liked it or not so i guess a whole load of people learn how to drive stick shift then the brake pedal can go in and to the clutch pedal okay now i'm going to let all these um cure dry really nicely and solidly in there then i'll paint them um some black on top of all these knobs and on the gear um, the handbrake maybe a little bit of uh, brushing just a bit of like wear and tear on like the, the metal bits on there okay uh that's pretty much it I'll, i do need to do the uh the steering column but i won't worry about that in a while in the meantime i'm going to construct the chair the seat for the driver and his front seat passenger should he have one he hasn't in this kit but you know he's not actually in in there and just um some glue along here and the back of the seat goes on here the back it, let that sit up and then we paint this um sort of uh institutional dark green i guess you'd call it the steering wheel goes into the hole here there we go all the way up and so there's a little tag on it that plugs the hole in the steering in the um footwell there and then there's a, another tab here that sits up against the bottom of the instrument panel the whatever you call this i can't remember what you call this these days underneath the instruments anyway central combing whatever um so we just add a bit a couple of drops of cement for those and that's in place now and the last thing to do is to put the back and the top on the back has got this ridge that runs through the back that it sits on like so 
then the roof of the cab just goes into the gap and that neatly sets the, the angle of the back here so just fit a quick bit of uh, extra thin in those joints and we're done the cab can go onto the chassis now it just sits over the chassis rail it's actually easier if you do it this way around i think locate the couple of locating pins there and there and just that sits on the rail like so so with the right hand door i've uh, put the uh, window winder and door handles on the inside and the door just fits into the frame like so and it fits really well i mean really well now i'm not going to do the other door yet because of course i'm going to have to put the driver figure in later on but this one can close up um i was at first concerned that i'd maybe done something with the hinge here like sanded it off accidentally there isn't a hinge here there is a hinge at the bottom but this part here is a hinge that also has um, a rear view mirror a side mirror on it so that comes as a separate part so don't worry if there's a gap there there's a few more sort of ancillary bits that go in here the first is i'm assuming the starter motor And there's this oil filler pipe. Sits there. And there's the damper linkage to the front leaf spring. On a car now, nowadays you have like a a, damp, a central damper with a, a coil spring wrapped around it so you got the spring for the suspension and the damper to damp the motion of the spring here because it's a leaf spring you've got a, a separate uh, damper arm and a damper here and there's another one on the other side we need to connect up as well there's also this last piece of the suspension puzzle as it were it goes in there and then this arm goes in here and sits on there And it's tragic that the majority of this is just going to be lost. Yeah, <laughs> it's just going to be hidden. And it's so sad. It's it's a nice um, exercise, but it's largely an exercise in futility, I'm afraid. But still, it's there. We'll let that set up, and we'll um, paint it all as well. The radiator comes in two halves. Uh, simply slot together like this. And there's a fan shroud that goes on as well. That needs to clip into there, like so. The side panels of the engine compartment go here. I just clip into this, slot into here, and at this end there's like a recess, and that slot's quite nicely there. And there's a small peg around there that's on the chassis that it sits on and that kind of all lines everything up like so then the front grille radius grille can sit on the front of the engine bay like so the bumper bar can go on the front as well like so and the covers of the wheel arches we call wheel arches fit in like so 
all we have to do now is put the spare wheel here on the chassis and this is the chassis essentially complete the chassis build is complete with this part now obviously all we have to do now is put the rest of the wheels on right, i'm going to start on the flatbed now and uh, this is the tailgate actually so these pieces fit in like so just add a tiny dab of glue to the ends to keep them in place then there's some tie down hooks for the you know the canvas roof they need tie down hooks so there's loads of these to put in around the side four on this tailgate alone the sides of the truck go together pretty much the same way then the walls of the flatbed can go together like this they just sit together really easily on each side there are these railings that go on which are the upper railings of the flatbed on these railings there's some posts which are going to support them above the level of these sides essentially it's going to be like that and the sideboards go onto these pins that are sticking up here There are a set of four ribs that go underneath the flatbed and these kind of support it on the frame. The holes are really, really small. And you do have to make sure you don't block these other really tiny holes, which are for the mud flaps. the rear lights go into this little holder like this trust me this is not an easy thing to put they're not easy to pick up um on the light cluster there's a bigger round bit and then a, a stripe there is a decal that goes on there to cover that but i'm not going to do that i'm going to paint it later because i think it will look better so let's just put a bit of glue on the back of there and then these pieces when they're dry the round bit goes towards the top like so and then the bracket goes onto this it's like so cross member or something like that and then it just gets dabbed in like so Then with the round part up, like so, just add a little bit of glue to hold it in place. Then that rear panel goes onto the back of the flatbed like so right the mud flaps go in to the holes here on this side the rear of this last cross member and the the braces for it go into smaller holes here then they sit against the sit against the, the my 
go ahead like so. Now it says to put the front mud guard in now and it just goes sort of sits straight up. I'm actually going to wait a little bit until um, it's time to put the, the struts in as well because I'm not convinced I'll be able to get these things to stay vertical otherwise. But we'll do the other side here now. In fact, on the very next page, it says to do the same with the rear flaps, front flaps. The rear or front? No, these are the front ones only. Front ones. And it says to put the struts in. So it's odd. There's like, um, it tells you to do these, then it tells you to do something completely different, and then it tells you to do the front ones. But, oh well. As long as they get done, I don't mind. Okay, so this piece goes through here. And just for the moment, I'm going to kind of hold it like so. Then we'll get some glue. And this piece joins it here. Like this. Okay, we're going to leave that well alone now for a little while to make sure it um, does set, and then we can put this onto this. Isn't that exciting? Actually, what we'll do is we'll paint this first, give it a spray of uh, US dark green first, so the whole thing's painted, and then we'll put the flatbed on the chassis. And that fuel pipe goes into a hole on the tank. Right, oh, over there, like right, so. Right, now remember what I said about the pipe here and, and these, you know, back in the day I said, oh, you know, they say to put this in, but not put the, uh, the supports in and I, well as this side you do put the supports in this side you don't the reason is because when you put this on the the uh, chassis the exhaust pipe has to go inside those supports so that's why if you follow the instructions you do this side the supports going there. In fact, you could even leave this off until you're ready, then put that on, then put the supports in. Whereas this side, you do it at the time when you do the others. Um, because the pipe is supposed to go through in the gap between the uh, struts and the mud flap. So, my mistake, uh, don't do what I did. <laughs> do it properly when you do it. Three. We start making the wheels now, they're all pretty much the same, um, but do stick to the right ones for the right places because the hubs are slightly different. But the wheels, you know, they just slip together like so. Uh, and just. Okay. Pamp them together. When they set, just sand off that, that rim because there will be a rim. And then. Then this is a front wheel unit, so this drum goes in here. Sits on a couple of pins, like so. Okay. The rear wheels are doubled up, so they have a pin and hole connection here. So line them up like so. Let's leave them to set together. Then on the um, this piece here is like a mounting cone for the wheels. So and then this piece here goes on the those six holes line up with these six holes on the wheel rim and go in 
and that forms a wheel unit for the back and you can just do another one for the other side the bench comes as a single piece there are five legs that sort of stick in um, it's a little hole little peg and a hole for each one then the assembly goes in here like so and then lines up with hopefully lines up with some pegs on the side there this is a good time to put the wheels on as well they all feed through the hubs and then there's a small cap piece you need to fit while i'm waiting for other things to dry and cure and whatever else i'm going to do a little bit of um, wash on this truck i'm going to put some like, some earth staining in i'm just mixing in some pigment and just um, some earth colored pigment I mean, just going to put it in some water and this creates like a little wash and then we can just wash that onto various bits of the model and give it some earthy color and start on this sort of running board here just um, wash it into corners there and it'll act like a dot like a like a wash it'll act like a wash and it'll dry like a wash as well so just sort of dabbing it into corners where grime and sand and dust are going to accumulate basically and remember because it's water-based and because we've already varnished this kit with some satin varnish at least um, when it dries if it's too much we can just paint out what we don't want um, with the uh, with the brush like that. and just go around and add bits of earth color wherever you feel appropriate really right, so I'm just going to um, deal with the uh, browning the 50 cal now it says to feed the belt in from the left which is there um, but if you do that, if you feed the belt in from the left like this, you can see, I hope you can see the, I'll show you, it goes in on the left hand side. Um, if it goes in the left hand side, you can see the, the rounds are pointing backwards. Yeah, if you use this, but however, if you that, use that as the tail, then the rounds are in the right way and that's what I'm going to do as if it had already been properly loaded um, the very tip here I've just twisted that round a bit so it looks like it's actually going into the chamber of the gun like so I'll glue those on and uh, paint it up and that will be ready to go on so this is the um, rear hoop over the back no, actually, no, it's the front hoop over the truck. And it's the one where the pin tool for the M1919 is. To put this on, they say you have to drill a 0.6 mil hole in this. That makes it really weak. And as soon as, you try and put, or as, soon as I try and put that in, it, it snapped. It had already snapped over here as well. This thing's been in three pieces already. But anyway, I managed to get it together. So, um, I don't know, maybe you might want to just cut off the bottom and do this straight onto the top of the frame, maybe. I don't know. But it's very, very, very delicate. So that's the frame in place with this. It's <laughs> really delicate with the pin tool for the machine gun right in the middle of the top. One, two, three. The headlamps uh, just come with this this. Uh, transparent piece of so paint the inside silver and put the transparent piece on and then it can sit in place on the top of the 
fender here. Would you call this a fender in America or under? I can't remember. And quarter panel for me. There we go, like so. And of course, just top off the paint when you're ready. Almost at the end now, and the wing mirror goes in the side, like so. Good. So the next thing are the supports for the windscreen, if you're going to have them open, which I am. These go on these tiny little pegs on the edge of the windscreen. Then the windscreen itself goes in. Got these hinges it sort of sits on. And we can put the windscreen wipers on as well. What I do need to check is whether they go on the same side or whether they alternate, go out in, out in, or left, right, left, right together. And of course, on the example in the instructions, they're straight down. So I'm going to guess they go left, they go out in, out in, rather than left, right, left, right. So the ICM. G7107 truck with a Browning M1919 machine gun on top. I'm really happy with it. Um, I am not one who builds a lot of vehicles. I found it relatively straightforward. There's lots of bits here. You know, that, you know you've got your full suspension, you've got your engine, you've got all the bits and pieces dangling here, there and everywhere and handles and things. There's a lot to it, but they do all go together very, very well, I think. Um, I can't think of too many things that were uh, terrible. The only thing I'm, I'm, I'm really unimpressed by is the pintle mounting that goes through that front hoop of the roof because you drill through that and that becomes incredibly weak. Those hoop parts are brittle and difficult as they are. Um, drilling a hole through one really makes it really difficult to do other than that uh i think everything's gone in pretty well to be honest i've cut down the window glass you can see there in the driver's uh door because there's going to be a figure there and he's got his hand or his elbow resting on the window frame so i wound down the window most of the way and um, the other door uh, the window isn't set in properly yet because I want to be able to take the window out so I can get a tweezers in to help set the figure and things like that. But otherwise, here it is. Um, very happy with it, actually. Um, as I said, I'm not a natural builder of vehicles. If you've built something like the uh, FX Austin K2i or that new, um, that new truck that's been released, and you're happy, then you're going to be fine with this. There's just more little pieces to put together, but the built the design is lovely and the bits go together very, very well. Um, if you found something like the K2Y, the FX KT, a bit too much, then this might be just that little bit too far for you. However, if you're happy having a bash with like full suspension parts, an engine and all these bits and pieces on the back then this is a really nice kit because as i say the pieces actually fit together very very well i've enjoyed making it oddly enough now i need to put some figures with it so that's the next video but for now this is the icm g7107 well it was certainly quite complex there were a few challenging pieces and there are a few pieces that Really, I don't know if they could have been done better. The one that sticks in my mind is the front uh, roof hoop that then has the gun support. You have to drill through the hoop to put the gun support in. You drill through there and you've got like a, a, you know, a tenth or a two tenths of a millimeter either side. And it's fairly soft plastic. That's going to break straight away. So maybe there could have been a bit more uh, solid thing for that. But anyway. 
it's made i like it i'm i really like it I, i'm really stoked that i made this kit work and i'm looking forward to doing the figures for it that will be the next video probably that appears on my channel how you know when it appears well all you've got to do is subscribe to the channel hit the bell and you'll be notified when that's on future videos are published and of course if you like anything on my channel please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the button below because every like counts that's it for today thank you very much for watching hope to see you again soon take very good care goodbye